we have a new machine to build. So today we are taking a look at this, the Saint Smart Genmitsu 4040 Pro. Now given the price range that this comes in, it packs some impressive specs behind it and we'll move on to that in another video where I do a full review. But obviously for today, the first thing we need to do is get it unboxed and built. Now before I move on to doing that, I'm just going to quickly mention this. This is blue Loctite. When assembling your machines, you can put a little drop of this on every single bolt and it just guarantees everything is going to stay together nice and firm. It's not essential, but it can help. You won't see me use it in this video, just because obviously it can get messy if I need to take anything back apart to reshoot, but definitely something to consider. But for now, let's get this unboxed and start getting it assembled. So once you have everything unpacked, it may sound obvious, but check it all against the contents list within the instructions. Even down to every bolt in this container set, make sure they are all there. You do not want your project to be held up for the sake of missing one bolt or one washer, something very small and simple. Also for the purpose of today, we are going to be following the instruction manual as it is laid out. If I deviate away from this at any point because I think it can be done better, I will let you know during the course of the video. So I'm just going to quickly jump in here. Now the end goal of today's video is to build the machine as we see it here, complete with the bed and the back and front braces. Now I know that sounds odd and the reason I'm flagging it is if you jump to page 17 of your manual, you'll see there is a second method of assembly where you don't use the bed and you don't use those braces. Essentially you fix this down to the bed just with the Y axis and the X axis, nothing else in the middle. Now there are advantages to doing this, for example if you're planning to machine something like metal, then getting coolant on this MDF bed is kind of a bad thing. So you could potentially mount this to like a solid metal table and therefore not worry about the coolant getting all into the MDF bed. There are pros and cons to both approaches, but the point I'm making here is this is what we are doing in this video, the full assembly with the bed and the braces. So to begin with, we are going to get the front and rear module ready to attach the bed to. And all we simply need to do is fix these rubber feet to them. So make sure these are facing with the channel upwards and that is the same on both of them. Take your rubber feet out of the container. They should simply just peel off and then stick them into the channel on either end. Apply a little bit of pressure, make sure they are stuck down and do the same for all four ends. Next, we're gonna flip the modules over so the feet are on the bottom and do take note that one has cables sticking out of it. This is essentially the rear of the machine. We're now gonna spin this around and place the spoil boards on top of this. Now these modules do have a front and a back. There is a line of holes going all the way along them. The one on the rear of the machine, the holes need to be at the back of it and on the front, they need to be at the front of it. So essentially, wherever the gap is on here, like this long gap here, that should face into the middle of the machine, no matter whether it is the front or the back. The spoil boards are identical. There is not a front or a back to them. There is a top and a bottom to them. So you want the threaded inserts underneath so that you can see the threads through here, but you don't have the face of them like you do here. So these go underneath. Once you have those in position, roughly line them up with the holes on one of the modules and we will need the M5 20 millimeter bolts. And we're just gonna drop these all along one edge and then we'll move over to the other edge and do that as well. Use the Allen key provided in the set to tighten these up. You want to leave them a little bit loose. Do not make them tight completely. We will need a little bit of play for later on. So all 12 bolts should be in. Neighbor is say only finger tight, so there is a little bit of play in the bed itself. Next, we're going to use the locator pins that they provided, and we're gonna drop two in each corner. So that should be eight in total. Next, you'll want to bring in the Y axis. Now, if you're struggling to know the difference between the Y and the X axis, the Y has holes on the modules on top. That's how we distinguish them. This is the left-hand side with the control box on, and the right-hand side has nothing. Obviously, I'm doing this back to front, so it is the opposite way around for me. We're then gonna drop these onto the locator pins that we've just put in place. We'll slide them down, make sure they're sitting comfortably and do the same on both sides. And we're gonna bring in 16 of the M520 millimeter bolts 
and we're going to drop these into each of the four corners on each corner of the machine itself. You'll want to put these in again finger tight. You want to allow a little bit of movement for us to square the machine up shortly. So don't be alarmed. It looks like we've jumped ahead quite a bit, but upon editing the video, the next segment where I squared up the frame was missing. So I've had to reshoot it at the end of the video. Essentially what you should have at this point is both of your Y axis fixed down, but all the bolts holding everything together should be slightly loose to make sure we can square the frame up. Now to do this, bring in a tape measure and you'll want to measure corner to corner. So we're just going to bring this in, place it on the inner corner there and measure to the inner corner here. And we have 72 centimeters or 720 millimeters. Now do exactly the same, but for the opposite corner. Take that same measurement and again, it should come out identical. Now the frame is fairly um, solid because of all the holding pins so that should be accurate and once your measurements have been taken and they are accurate bring your allen key in or something like this just go around and tighten all of those bolts up if anyone's interested i'll drop a link to this one it was dirt cheap off amazon but for now all of the bolts are in place and this is held secure i should have mentioned make sure both parts of your bed are pushed together before tightening the bolts up you don't want a gap down the middle. Now what we're going to move on to is putting the x-axis gantry into place. And what we need to ensure is both of these um, carriages on the side are pulled back to the stoppers. So make sure you turn the stepper motor anti-clockwise to begin with and then turn it clockwise until it comes back and hits the stopper on the end. Do that for both sides. Now we're going to bring in the x-axis gantry. The cabling should be on the back and also the Genmitsu should be on the front. Now there are little locator pegs on the top of the carriages and also slots underneath here to make sure that this can sit correctly. So place this on, get it roughly in place. It should sit onto those blocks comfortably. It will slide left and right. So make sure the holes are over the threaded holes and then bring in the M5 18 millimeter bolts to hold this in place. So I've just moved the whole machine forward a little bit to make it easier to film. I was very aware this was getting cropped off off the top of the camera. Now the next thing we are going to be doing is installing the Z assembly. Now with this, Saint Smart have allowed two different positions to fix this in place. You can either have this in position one, which is lower down, so this will allow you to machine thinner materials, or you can lift it up to the second set of holes, and this will allow you to machine thicker materials. So there's quite a big difference there. For the purpose of today, we're gonna to stick with the lower one. So basically there are two sets of holes one two three and four for the purpose of today we're going to be going with holes one and three so we're going to put that in place and to hold this in position we will be using m5 16 millimeter bolts so we're going to get those in place and start to tighten those up obviously really difficult me trying to do it from this angle so we'll reposition this and get all those four bolts in Next, we are going to be fitting the Z-axis cable mount. Now, the L shape of this goes towards the back of the machine, and we're going to be fitting this using M38 millimeter bolts. So these are a little bit small, just get them in place, and then obviously screw them in to the threaded holes. Next, we're going to take the cable and we're going to thread this up through the bottom of the Z-axis bracket that we just put in place. So slide it through, make sure not to catch anything. Make sure all the terminals go through nice and easy. And then pull the sleeve in through as well. You don't want that getting caught up either. With the cabling pulled through, we're going to connect the biggest connector to the back of the Z axis. Now this should only go in one way. There are two little pins that go underneath. So we'll slide that in and make sure that clicks into place. We'll then want to bring the cable round that just has the three wires and we're going to plug this into the limit switch holder just here. And finally, we're going to take the two cables for the spindle. These are marked up as positive to the left hand side and negative to the right hand side. So obviously to the negative, we will put the black cable and to the positive, we will put the red cable. And just to finish this off, we will bring in a cable tie and we're just going to try and get this in place to hold all these cables nice and tidy. And then we'll just work our way around connecting all the remaining cables. We're gonna start with the big one to go to this control box on the back of the X axis. And again, this will only go in one direction, push it in till it clicks nice and tight. 
On the left hand side under the stepper motor there are two cables that need to be connected together. And then on the right hand side there is just one cable that goes into the underneath of the stepper motor. A few extra cable ties to hold things in place. Connect the Z probe, plug in the power supply, connect the USB cable. So how easy was that? That is the physical build on this machine done. Now, there will be some spare bolts left in your container. Do not throw them away. You'll also have some other parts, such as spare limit switches, collet inserts, which go into here, and also some bits, obviously, to get test cuts done. The other thing you'll have is this, the thumb drive or USB stick. Now, this is crucial for the next stage in terms of getting this installed onto your PC or laptop. If you're completely new to this, then I'll definitely suggest checking out this video right here, which will talk you through step-by-step step everything about installing your machine onto your PC, getting everything clamped down securely and nice and tight, and ultimately getting your very first test job done just to make sure that everything is working. There are test files on this stick as well. So as I say, it's definitely worth keeping it around and keeping it close. Now, that is everything for today's episode. I really hope you found it useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please make sure you've subscribed if you've not done so already. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, final thanks goes to my patrons. I will see you all on the next episode, which will hopefully be the full review of this machine.